Once again, I'm back to one of my favorite topics, water level measurement. This time for tank 2, on a temporary basis. I say a temporary basis because I already have a, a solution that's, well, on its way from China. It is the MPX5010. It's a pressure sensor. That guy will actually measure the level. It's an easy solution to implement. has an analog output, so it's perfect for me. But in the, in the meanwhile, I needed a, a, a temporary solution that could uh, handle the measurements. So I revisited uh, my old friend here, the ultrasonic sensor that I made uh, as a secondary uh, as a, sens a secondary sensor for the primary domain fish tank. Well, this guy has a couple of problems. First of all, and most uh, serious, is if a water splash gets in here on the emitter or the receiver, uh, there goes the readings. The sensor is useless for a period of time, and that's just uh, terrible. The other problem is that this sensor outputs uh, pulses, uh, duration of pulses. And my controller is actually waiting for a 0 to 5 volts signal, so an analog signal. So, yeah. Although the electronics is not that hard to implement, that to do this kind of conversion, well, it's just not worth it because of the first problem. So my next idea was, although the principle is quite the same, infrared. We have an emitter and a receiver. They work quite the same as the ultrasonic. I happen to have a photo amplifier here, made by Telco. It's an industrial sensor very rugged well I suppose these guys uh, have epoxy inside of it they're not afraid of water like this guy is so it's a perfect solution a perfect fit and the photo amplifier will actually take care of reading those those guys and output a digital uh, a digital value to the controller a yes or no there's level or there's not so you would you kind of adjust the sensitivity that let's say it's it is the level so you're just in here and this guy will actually take care of the rest one last option that I had on my table why not go with a floating sensor like the one I have in my my main tank well float sensors are great but they're also uh, big heavy hard to implement uh, hard to make one of them so for a temporary basis uh, it's not gonna fly, it's not the ideal solution. So, in this video I'll be showing how I implement a level measurement uh, system using infrared sensors and a photo amplifier. Right now I'm working on my secondary, uh, my temporary actually, uh, level detection. It's based on an infrared emitter and an infrared receiver and a photo amplifier. Uh, industrial version it's like this so here's the meter and right here's the receiver right now it's actually detecting uh, whatever is underneath by reflection in my case water this is why there's a green and a yellow LED uh, on right now if I start to raise the sensor which means in my situation the level is actually uh, dropping by some leak in the system uh, I'm start to raise the alarm led starts to flash and after that if I raise a little bit more there we go the output is off indicating that I have a low level in the pump uh, should be turned on. This, uh, if I start to lower again, and there you go. So this guy will actually uh, signal to the controller, to the main controller, and the controller will actually uh, take action and turn off the pump reason I'm using an industrial version, a, a, a somehow expensive sensors that I, I have this guy 
here I'm not doing anything so while I wait for the actual pressure sensor to arrive from China I'm going to implement this as a in a temporary basis as a temporary solution so I don't have uh, I don't have to let the tank uh, unprotected all right, just finish mounting the control panel on the metal box, same metal box that I use for my other control panel. Here's a tiny hole for the ESP32 antenna. It's mounted over here. Blinking LED means a connection with my server. And Right now I just finished uh, putting together the actual uh, level sensor, the level switch. Like I said, it's infrared. Right now, uh, to the input to it's connected uh, this pair, uh, this pair transmitter and receiver, so I can demonstrate the system actually working. Right now the level it's at zero, so this tiny relay here is actually connecting the input that this input here to the ground so it reads zero when the relay clicks it will actually connect to the 5 volts through this red wire here uh, let me demonstrate so right now I got yeah I got no no reflection or no light shining into the receiver. Let me put both together. It's kind of hard to do in a, with only one hand, but okay, here it is. Whoops. And it well, takes a while. There we go. I got level. So okay there, pumps on. If I break the break the connection, break the light, I can hear the relay click. And just like that, pumps off. And a error. Now well I also installed the sensor outside on the fish tank. Now I can Luckily, I haven't tested yet if everything is right. I can actually remove that. Here's the cable coming from the sensor that's on the fish tank. All I have to do is actually connect to the input number two. All right, so it's a sensitivity issue. Let me grab my screwdriver. Just, just this tiny hole here, this potentiometer, until yeah, it's on, but it's blinking, not a solid connection. There we go. We got a, a green. If I turn back just a little bit, it flashes it over again. So, yeah, right now it's reading the level. It's reading okay. Water is reflecting light. Okay, pumps on. Last thing I need to do is actually connect the pump. 
on the output number one. But well, it's getting late. Time for a cold beer. I'll do this tomorrow. I gotta give you guys a view of the supervisories. This one right here is for the second tank, the one I'm working on the automation. And that one is for the main tank, first tank. So back at the first tank, I got the control panel over here. Actually, signal is quite bad, you can see over here. That's because the laptop's right near the antenna. So, I finished what I had to do. Involved the relay in some electrical tape, so it's everything safe. And I connected, not sure if you guys can see that easy. I connected the main pump over here with a suppressor made by a capacitor in series with a resistor. That's because uh, the pump is a high uh, inductive load, so you kind of need a suppressor. So everything's connected, everything's working. You guys can see that there's level, the infrared sensor is actually detecting water, and that's because the pump is running, everything is okay. We can see in the supervisor that the level is actually the maximum. Like I said previously on this video, it's not a matter of the control uh, panel to actually measure the level that's done by the photo amplifier. The photo amplifier only tells if there is enough water or if there isn't, so it's 255 or 0, but everything is working just the way it should, it should right now. Everything is working cool. And that's it. This project is also uh, very modular. I just had to open another another window, another supervisory uh, software, and enter the IP address, and that's it. I can connect with another control panel, so I can build uh, any any number of control panels that I that I feel like. I do it the same characteristics. I do it the same specs. And then I just run another supervisory uh, software, another supervisory interface. Alright, so this is the last part of the video. I want to show you guys my distribution box. It's just a connector for all the sensors. So the sensors hook up in here and they go back to the controller on a single cable, which is better. Here I have a light sensor, the automatic feeder has a low food uh, alarm system inside, so there's a low level sensor in there. And here, finally mounted uh, on this bracket, is the actual level sensor, infrared level sensor for the, for the fish tank. So I use this hole here. There's really not much to say. It's working. The wires go back to the control panel. And all the magic happens. Yeah, here we have some tilapia. Unfortunately, we can only see the red tilapias at this moment. But they're, but they're here, but they're here. Plants are doing well. As well. That's it for this video, thanks for watching.